Hey guys, we're back with another top five. And this time, it's for the best indie games of the month. So, from five to one, here we go. Number five, Battle Block Theatre on Steam. Already a popular title on Xbox Live Arcade, Battle Block tells the familiar tale of a lost stick puppet performing for an audience of cats. That's right, get ready to experience the game that won every award for everything ever, like you've never seen it before. Steam! The manic humor blends expertly with the catabolic gameplay, caused by its many blocks that vary from spiky to sticky to boomy. Play alone, with friends, or against friends. All up, Battle Block Theater is super polished, and is not higher on this list only because it's being re-released. But be warned, it's... Rated T for being a little naughty. Number 4, Full Ball. And yes, this game calls itself boring. It's also another 2D indie puzzle platformer, which makes it even easier to write off. But the cake is a lie, and so are all prejudgments of this game. Full Ball is a cut above other puzzle platformers, with really solidly designed puzzles that require experience and knowledge to solve, as opposed to tinkering with game mechanics. On top of that is an excellent exploration dynamic, so you're bound to dig the pig. So much for book covers. At number three, we have the incredible adventures of Van Helsing 2. A year after the original game, Van Helsing has returned. And so is the same pop culture fueled humour, big loot and hack and slash combat that made this ARPG so memorable. However, this sequel is no rinse and repeat job. The game has been majorly refined and enhanced with more engaging story, Chimera summoning powers and tower defense minigame. And the proof is in the pudding, or rather the Metacritic, with Van Helsing 2's score of 81 being 9 points higher than the original. Unless you've been living under a rock lately, you know the follow-up to Supergiant's 2011 smash hit Bastion is finally here in the form of Transistor. Transistor maintains the pivotal elements of Bastion. An isometric view, omnipresent narration, and action RPG gameplay. Yet introduces new ideas that make it defined. This includes the story, which follows Red, a singer whose voice was stolen in a failed attempt to assassinate her. The sword she wields, known as the Transistor, was the weapon used in the assassination attempt. It appears that an unknown man connected to Red was killed by the Transistor, and his consciousness has been absorbed into allowing him to become the narrator. Also, the gameplay stands on its own, with a new planning mode innovation. Integrated into real-time action, it allows you to freeze time and then plot your movements, before reactivating time to see them out. You have something more. It's a really unique feature that provides immense satisfaction from trying to eliminate as many enemies as possible in a single stroke. Transistor doesn't disappoint, and all the hype it's been steeped in is completely warranted. And at number one, we have Blade Symphony. It's hard to fathom that there was a game this month that topped Transistor, but it's even harder to fathom that Blade Symphony is real or that it's indie. The game is a lot like Soul Calibur. It has the beautiful graphics, endless character customization, and fighting combos. Just that it does it in 3D. <laughs> the openness to this game is mind blowing, especially when you consider the side scrolling nature of the fighter genre. Unfortunately, this creates some flaws, especially to its combat, which can be likened more to a hack and slash than a fighter at times. Nevertheless, Blade Symphony is definitely kicking off, with popular multiplayer options and a great community that's even hosting a world tournament. The sheer ambition, detail and execution of Blade Symphony make it our number one indie game in May. Well guys, if you like this video, follow us on Twitter and subscribe for more like it. Well, thanks for watching. I've been Lawrence. And I've been Josh. We'll see you next time here on Indie Former.